Hello folks, today we're going to talk about a f extremely rare firearm that you don't see too much of these days, uh, known as the AJ Ordnance Thomas 45, uh, made by AJ Ordnance in Covina, California, starting around 1977. The uh, firearm some say produce were produced till about 1988 but only maybe about 600 examples exist of the firearm today um, they were a uh, concept of having a super compact uh, all steel framed 45 pistol mostly to describe it it's an awful lot like say the design of a mackerel that has a fixed barrel uh, some of the oddball things is a striker fired uh, has a mechanical delayed blow uh, blowback, which is a, a very bizarre feature of the weapon uh, that is actuated by what would you would consider a grip safety. Um, this little uh, design probably is more those and so than anything killed this pistol in production. Um, the gun wasn't wildly successful, probably number one because of this. Uh, secondly, uh, around 77, 79, I think around that period of time, the trends in gun ownership at the time, people were really pushing the full-size service auto pistol, you know, the Smith & Wessons, the, the 1911s, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the smaller concept really just kind of flew by the wayside. Um, would the gun survive today's market? Probably not. It's uh, too many oddball little uh, features with it that seem to just knock it out of uh, contention for anything. Neat pistol though. Uh, I'll describe it a little bit later. This is obviously not a stock model. I'd had this modified uh, later on. Um, seriously a novelty pistol. I don't shoot it much, but for the historical aspect, I figure a lot of people might like to see it. This particular AJ Ordnance Thomas 45 was purchased by a uh, late friend of mine at a gun show, probably maybe 2003, 2004. I think he gave just a couple hundred bucks for it and was beaten to death. Um, he thought he had some ideas what to do with it. Uh, then he offered to me basically at the same price that he bought it for. So obviously the gun's been highly modified over what the stock AJ Ordnance looks like. I guess I had this idea that I would use it as a highly concealable uh, concealed carry weapon, <clears throat> seeing that it was a 45 and have a lot of power, but there are uh, numerous drawbacks to the gun that kind of kept me from doing that. Um, there are a lot better firearms than this antiquated design. Uh, some of the things that were done different to this gun is I had sent it to Robar at the time. And initially they were going to MP3 the entire firearm. And the slide later was coded with their Roguard. Evidently they made multiple attempts to MP3 it. And it kept leaching oil no matter what they did. So we went ahead and settled with that. <clears throat> My uh, friend who had passed away always thought that the uh, firearm would be really uh, interesting with a high, super high, high visibility front sight, which to kind of honor him, I did that. But the only way that the gunsmiths at Robar could find a sight, a sight that would elevate high enough for that front sight was a mill at, at rear adjustable, which is obviously way overkill for a small concealable handgun, but it works. You know, so we're not going <laughs> to worry too much about that. Um, so, MP3 lower, row guard upper, millet sights. The um, grips on the original AJ Ordnance 45s were injection molded and extremely fragile, and it's really hard to find a, even a, an ex example of an original that grips aren't cracked. Um, I made these grips from... Uh, two color G10 epoxy glass like a lot of the stuff that you see used in knife making and I think there's a lot of gun grips being made in it now which isn't the easiest thing in the world uh, they're pretty complicated on the reverse side of the grip lots of inletting and such you probably see 
where this delay blowback lever is and uh, took a lot of work to do that but very sturdy um, from what I understand there's a couple companies that make replacement grips for this but I've never really gone that far with it so some of the oddball things about the pistol number one it's a delayed blowback pistol now the well-known HKP7, P7M8, uses a gas-delayed blowback. So it supposedly helps reduce the recoil uh, when gas pressure is built up to a certain degree. Uh, the, it allows the slide to go to the rear, so it, evidently I guess it's just bleeding off gas and some of the recoil. On this particular pistol, it uses a mechanical-style delayed blowback system. And how that's actuated, whereas let's say like a 1911, the rear grip safety is uh, squeezed to, you know, in order to be able to fire the gun. What it is on this firearm is this is the delay blowback lever. So if you can see, I don't know if you can see with this, when you squeeze in on this grip safety, these two levers come up on either side of the firearm and somewhat lock the slide so in other words you cannot pull the slide back when the weapons fired however the pressure of the recoil of the round overcomes these levers and they roll forward so it, it reduces the recoil supposedly of the firearm um, <clears throat> now one thing I can tell you for sure 230 grain hollow points this gun is very very stiff to shoot it you know you shot something when you pulled the trigger it it, it, it hurts you uh, not the easiest gun in the world to shoot. The gun will not fire if your handle, your hand, the web of your hand is not completely compressing that. Um, and the real, really oddball thing, and and what would in these days in particular not make the firearm popular at all, is the fact that uh, in order to charge the weapon you cannot have your hand in the normal position you would with a say a government model or any other firearm so if my hand is on that lever of course the delayed bow black levers come forward into the slide and i cannot pull the slide back so in order to be able to pull the slide back your hand has to sit lower so it's got a weird different manual of arms like such now obviously that doesn't fly in, in modern day tactics and uh, reloading the pistol, you know, like say in a shootout or something like that would be a little tricky. And I don't think that anybody in this day and age would ever want to mess with that. Um, cool features about the weapon, all steel frame, uh, compact, not very fat. Uh, I've got a holster that uh, was made by the excellent holster smith Gary Bromeland. Not particularly for this firearm, he'd kill me if, he, if I said that. But it fits it perfectly and uh, the gun tucks away really easily. All steel, super wide ejection port, uh, just a good solid feel of the weapon, nice picture sight of course with the, these sights. The other ones are relatively beady like an original 1911. Uh, striker fire, uh, so no hammer. Um, and uh, believe it or not, even with this I believe three inch barrel is fairly accurate. Uh, has a standard uh, mag release, just like a 1911, and the mags themselves are an awful lot like an officer's magazine. In fact, I even think that they are. It's got a rounded follower, and there's a extra little notch that's knocked in there. And I think somewhere around here, I've got an officer's mag that I modified, and it works just fine in the weapon too. Sometimes kind of iffy if the slide locks back the way it's supposed to. You know, again, these guns were never perfected. Uh, <clears throat> In just a bit here, we'll get it out to the range. Um, shot it before, plenty of times, worked pretty good. Started experiencing some uh, out of battery fails with the, with the firearm, and um, I'm not 100% sure, I've been shooting a lot of reloads lately, not 100% sure that that's not a, a reloading issue, or if it's a uh, factory ammo issue. Probably would run just fine with uh, factory ammo, but uh, can't guarantee that. Uh, again, guns more of a novelty than anything else so well let's get it to the range
here we're at the range today with the AJ Ordnance Thomas 45. Doing a little testing. Uh, to be fair, we're testing with some uh, 230 grain reloads that uh, might just be slightly oversized. They function in my 1911 well, but I'm getting some slide out of battery failures with the weapon. It appears at any time that I have a malfunction that the slide has is back by just about a quarter of an inch. By force of four, the gun fires. Might be because of it's dry. Uh, used a real quick trick. I usually bring uh, gun oil with me, but this time I took some motor oil out of my uh, car engine and uh, lubricated it up, and we'll see how it does this time. Again, the Thomas has a very bizarre reloading and uh, chambering procedure. Uh, simply because of the delayed blowback lever <coughs> causes the gun when actuated the levers to come up so you can't actually rack the slide when your hand's in a normal position on the weapon. Your hand has to be lower than the actual lever for the slide to be actuated. So we kind of do it like this. Now we're in chamber, we're in battery, so at least we know we'll get one shot. Let's give it a try. That's one. That's in battery. That was out of battery. You can see it's kind of locked back a little bit. Shove forward and give it a try again. Goes. Out of battery again. That was different. Caught a little spray in my face from that. That little blowback experience of the range in my face turned out to be a ruptured casing. Uh, obviously from the uh, handgun being fired out of battery, uh, obviously a very con concerning safety concern. And it's guns like the AJ Ordnance Thomas 45 that make me always go back to my 1911. Well, there it is, the AJ Ordnance Thomas 45. Not a gun you see every day. Uh, probably not a gun that you will uh, really ever really want to own. Uh, interesting novelty uh, but in the grand scheme of things fairly insignificant